What is up, Internet world, and welcome to Accelerate. I'm Mike, and this is the all-new Lexus GX 550. I'm here in beautiful Tucson, Arizona to take a look at the all-new 2024 Lexus GX 550. Now it's in the third generation because the first one came out in 2002 as the GX 470 and stamped Lexus as a premium product. It's basically a Land Cruiser Prado that has leather and a few other bells and whistles that we all want here in North America. So let's talk about pricing and how they've trimmed out this GX 550. In the US they start at 64,250 for the premium, then you have the premium plus at 69,250. Then you get the luxury for 77,250, then the luxury plus at 81,250, then you have this overtrail at 69,250 and then a jammed overtrail which is called the overtrail plus at 77,250. So here's something interesting. This is a 3.4 liter V6 twin turbo. It's actually 3,445 cc's of displacement. But in North America, apparently you can't round up is what Lexus says, because it's actually marketed as a 3.5 liter in a lot of other places. But in here in the States, it's 3.4. It makes 349 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. It has made it to a 10-speed transmission, and we will see how fast it is. But it's really small in this compartment. Don't let this plastic cover fool ya. To the front of the all-new Lexus, take a look at these headlights. They are micro LED and they're inspired from the LC500. But the biggest visual for me is not this new grille, it's this hood. It's very Range Rover-esque. And the reason is, is because this platform and style that Lexus is pushing towards is designed to be an off-roader. So if you're looking for a Lexus that is available in a two-row or three-row, this is it. But the focus is off-roading and that shows in the hood right here. This is designed to keep your eyes on where the track of the vehicle is going. So when you're off-roading and you see a big gigantic rock and you're wondering where it is with respect to where my wheels are, well this hood lets you know. And when you move your eyes further down this bumper, you see you have a side light and a front fog light. But right here is the change. This grille is nice, clean, straight, and of course you have the front camera because this does have 360 cameras. Obviously, it's a Lexus. Now, when considering buying a Lexus GX 550, there are two paths you can pick. The luxury path, you know, the one designed for the mall and maybe a little bit of off-road use. And then there's one that's more specific to off-road and that is the over trail. Now, the over trails have something unique on this front bumper. Right here, it is removable. You can remove it because this is gonna get beat up when you take this thing off-roading. Even with an 8.7 inch ground clearance on the regulars and an 8.9 inch ground clearance, on the overtrail. To the side of this GX. Now there are many different trim models you can get, so we're gonna focus on this guy right here with some droplets of the overtrail. So on the side here, your fender flares are painted, but in the overtrail, they are hard plastic because of course they're gonna get beat up. You get 18s, 20s, and 22s in terms of your choice of wheels. These guys are nice and fancy. Now it does have an inner fender liner that is carpeted and not plastic to reduce the noise inside the vehicle. Now this is a big change in terms of design. A lot of squared off cuts. This is like a G-Wagon and a Range Rover mixed together. You can see it right here, a lot of cuts. Now you can get different versions of it. That includes a higher roof rail. This is nice and sleek, but when you get the over trail, it is a lot higher. That way you can pitch a tent on the roof. Now, the interesting thing to know is that when you move down here, you can get this in a two row and a three row. You can get it as a five passenger, a six, or even a seven, depending on the trim that you purchase. Now, depending on the GX you buy, you have three choices of a sunroof. Yes, that is true. You can get it without a sunroof, you can get it with your regular, typical sunroof, and then you can get one that has a monochromatic something or another to dim the amount of light that comes in. I'm seeing this more and more on modern homes, but not on a vehicle. There's a button that reduces the amount of light that comes in so your head doesn't get burnt when you're losing your hair like me. But don't worry, there is a shade. You can completely close it if you like. To the back of the Lexus GX 550. Starting at the top here, you see this extended out upper spoiler with a third brake light. They have moved this wiper from the top to the bottom. There's a cool feature here. Check this out. Ta-da! Yes, this is a whole new tailgate design. 
you get access like this from this rear glass. You also have a completely flattened design with a bar going right down the center from end to end to widen out this Lexus. You've got the LEXUS. You also have something that's so important that I'm gonna skip all this for half a second, and that is this guy. It tows up to 9,000 pounds, which is massive. That is a lot of weight to pull. And that's gonna be big for the US market because they like to tow their boats. Check this out. Power tailgate with a kick option. Now you don't get power tailgate standard depending on the trim you buy, but you have two options when you get it. One is to close it, of course it is height adjustable, and the other one is when the key's in your pocket, you hit the button, you walk away, and the vehicle completely locks. So people always wanna know what you can fit behind the third row of a three row SUV. So let's find out, can I fit inside this GX550 in the third row? Behind the third row, come on in. All right, let's close this trunk and go. Can I fit? That is the question. Okay, all right. Oh yeah, lots of leg room. Now get me out, get me out. All right, you can fit. And just in case you wanna have more room in the third row, there is two buttons that you can hold down. It's fully powered in the back. When I hit this guy, these things fold down all the way down as well as all the way up. Fully powered, just the third row. Now let's jump into the third row, but I wanna show you how it's done. Now these are captain's chairs. This is a six passenger configuration. And I'd like to let you know that this seat is in the exact position that I drove in. So I'm five foot nine. This is exactly how I'd sit. So let me show you how it's done. I pull this handle, this folds down, this comes up and I get to jump into the third row. So let me show you how it's done. Foot here, foot here, and then I jump into the back and sit down. Now I'm in the back of the third row here. And again, I'm five foot nine and I have enough leg room, enough headroom. It's just about enough for headroom. Someone probably five foot 11 will probably touch the ceiling. As far as comfort creatures go, I have two cup holders. I have a button to recline the seat because remember this is powered. I do have a USB-C. I have a vent here and this is very important. Having ventilation in the third row is key. Otherwise you feel really claustrophobic, especially when there's no sunroof. It's a hard shell above me and it is black. The other interesting thing to note is that the seat is sort of elevated. I'm not sitting right down. It's, it does have some height to it. And in terms of visibility, I have a nice big window. And that really is a tribute to the design of this all new GX550. Second row with these captains, tell you guys the comfort. They're fairly wide. I do have an armrest here, a center console for two cups and a little bit of storage for a cell phone. Can this recline? How far back? Well, pretty good. As far as HVAC controls go, I have a full display in the center console. I do have two USB-Cs and a lot of space to stick stuff behind the seat. But no sunroof on this guy. A little one, but in the front. Front seat of the all new Lexus GX 550. Ooh, all new interior. Let's start off with the biggest thing. How squared off and car-like this dash is. It's very inward, it's linear, it's squared off, and it rounds all the way around this door panel like it's seamless altogether. This door panel, of course, has powered windows on all four corners. Of course, I can bring the mirrors inside. These are really tiny mirrors, kind of like, I wouldn't say Jeep Wrangler, but maybe Bronco-ish, very tight mirrors. Different than what you'd expect, nice big Dumbo ears. These are tight. You do have a handle here and a handle here, very off-roady. You also have this sporty Lexus steering wheel. I like it, I like it a lot. But of course, the biggest thing here is this 14 inch screen. Really big, integrated very well into this dash. And then of course, your 10 inch heads up display. You do have a digital display in front of me that gives you all the things you need, like average fuel consumption, average speed of your tack, and of course, all the things you need, including this. This is designed to stare at your face to make sure you're paying attention. And when you're not, it tells you, Pay attention. Now down from these vents are a very clean center console. As you'll see, there is no piano black or gloss black. I like the finish Lexus has used. You have two USB-C, a slider that reveals a 12 volt plug. And initially I thought this was a wireless charging pad because of these two lines, but actually it's further down here in the center console. You do have your different drive modes up there. And then of course you hit this button and in this one you have three different ones. You have sport, normal and eco, and the overtrail has a few more. 
Then you have your stability program and then your toll haul button when you hit it. You of course do have paddle shifters. This is in fact a Lexus, so you have that. And you hit this brake, you shift it over into M and then you can use the paddle shifters or you can use this right here like most performance vehicles do because Lexus does have some performance behind it. You do have your electromechanical parking brake, your brake hold, and then this. This is for your high and low gears. This does have a two stage or two speed transfer case that is torsion differential based. You do have that button that is to lock your differentials and then you slide this over for your two squared out cup holders. Here's where a wireless charger is like I talked about and you do have a cool box depending on the model you get. Now if you're interested to know how soft this padding is on this armrest, for me that's a big factor and look at it. When I push on it, there's a lot of squeezing going on or squeezies as I like to call it. So let's talk about the drive itself. Very, very light steering. High, great visibility, but steering is very light, like ultra light. It takes no effort to turn this wheel whatsoever. So in terms of visibility all the way around, really good because this is a boxy design and all boxy designs just have good visibility. Blind spots are very low. The only real like thing I would complain about are these mirrors, they're really tiny. They're not exactly this way, they're this way. So it kind of, doesn't give you enough visibility. You have to really use this rear view mirror a lot. And there's no rear view mirror camera, it's just strictly like this. Yep, it does have home link though. Home link. So if you own a body on frame vehicle, you're probably used to a little bit more noise and rattling and maybe hardness to it. But this, you have a little bit of that, you can kind of tell, but it's not aggressive whatsoever. Like it's not bumpy to drive. It's smooth and quiet. They've really done a good job making this thing quiet. And you can opt for a noise cancellation system. So it has microphones all over the vehicle. It detects that and then it basically just gives it the opposite sound to cancel out the noise. So we went to this man-made course where you could see the articulation of the wheels, basically how much the wheel can drop, as well as how the wheels could tuck right into the fenders. Now, it has a system that can disconnect the roll bar. Now the overtrails have it standard, but it's an option on the other models. You have a ton of articulation, extra three and a half inches from the old model, which is pretty crazy. But the most interesting part of that day or that part of the day was crawl control, which means it can go up a crazy amount of angle essentially. And the one we just did was 34 degrees of uphill and it did it automatically simply by just turning the knob, pressing the button and bam, it worked. It was amazing. I didn't have to press anything. I just simply hit the button and there's five speeds you can pick essentially of how fast you want to go up this hill. I thought that was really interesting. It also obviously has hill descent. All that's great, but this going up by itself was pretty, pretty cool. Now, depending on the trim level you get, this higher end trim or this over trail has different drive modes. This specific one has custom, sport plus, sport, normal, comfort, and eco. And then you have MTS, and when you hit the button, you have different options such as deep snow, mud, sand, dirt, and auto. And then underneath that, you have basically your crawl control. You can hit it, and then you can adjust your speeds of your crawl control all by hitting the button right here. I'll go back to drive mode so I can get into sport, which is where I like to be. And bam, a little bit of power there for the 10 speed transmission just to move me forward. Now what I find really interesting is what Lexus has done with the front camera. They haven't put a camera underneath the vehicle, they put it in front of it, just like a 360 camera, but it has delayed the data that comes into our faces here. And what that does is when it's underneath the vehicle, it sort of gives you that like visual of it being underneath the vehicle when it's just the front camera being delayed. Lexus has three three-row SUVs, the LX, the GX, and the TX. Now, something interesting is that this is specifically designed for the off-road use. Lexus expects that half their sales in the GX will be the overtrail, which means the off-road segment. Now, when you put that all together, what other things does this offer? And the main reason people buy these, besides obviously the really good off-roading capabilities, you know, the four-wheel drive system, the reliability, all that fun stuff. The most, like the number one reason people buy this is for resale value. That's basically the deal. This has a huge, huge secondary market. 
And that's what does really well for this GX. People have been waiting for this vehicle for a very, very long time, especially when they get a new one every basically 10 years. So the lineup for these things is crazy. And I expect this video to do very well. So if you are one of our viewers watching this video up to this point, please comment below and let me know if you will be one of those buyers two or three years down the road. Now we're expecting to get this in dealership floors somewhere about the middle of 2024 if you have ordered one already. If you haven't, well, this might be a pretty decent investment when it comes to the car business or SUV business. Interesting thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. I wanna give a big shout out to Lexus Canada for bringing me here to Tucson, Arizona to take a look at the all new GX 550. So thanks for watching and let me know in the comments below if you guys would buy the regular signature one or luxury one or you'd buy the Overtrail. Me personally, the Overtrail all day. We'll catch you on the next one.